First, I've got to say thank you very, very much for the surprise dedication in this audio book. <laughs> Well, it was fun because I knew that you didn't know about it. And I I wanted you to find it when you started narrating. <laughs> so you have to tell me how you reacted. <laughs> well, uh, it was very early in the morning because I, I start quite early. I, I get up at six and I go through any, I keep my website up to date every day. I check that out and see if there's any new releases I need to add to it. So, so this is about probably about 20 past, maybe as late as half past six. So I'm still only kind of waking up and I'm like, huh? And I'm reading it. I'm like, Ishkia's written something about me. I can't read this. <laughs> so I asked you to do it instead, but I think that must have been your plan anyway, wouldn't it? Well, it wasn't my plan, but I figured it would happen. So I just kind of got ready for it. <laughs> it was lovely. I wouldn't be able to read my own dedication either. <laughs> <laughs> but you've got your whole book, which is a dedication to you and your work. You know? Yeah, it's a legacy. Yeah, what does you you've mentioned this before? Do you want to go into this? What it means when we for, uh, for anyone who's is is not familiar, this is the third book we've done together. Only we did it even more together this time round. Deliverance. We'll get to that in a bit. When you were auditioning me for the first book, which was uh, quite involved, let's say, but I didn't mind. You wanted to know if I could do all the characters and what I like to do with a fiction book with a lot of characters is work out the characters first before I even read a word of the book and just, you know, get a line, get a, get a, a line of dialogue about each character from the author and also uh, just a few words about the character to give me an idea. And then I'll record like one sentence literally and then put it in a shared file that the author can listen to. And we went back and forward quite a bit, didn't we, until we got all the characters down. And it took took a few, it took maybe about a week, maybe backwards and forwards. Do you think it took that long? Yeah, pretty much with a, but if you add up all of them, but nothing intense for, for a week, just back and forth when we could, when we could do it. But yeah, yeah. it's about that because it was a lot of, it was a lot of. I was being picky. <laughs> I was being really picky because I wanted you to capture the essence of who they really were inside. You know, yeah. even if the story didn't portray it at that point in time. You know, so it was pretty neat. It was a fun process. It was. It was fun because I kept adjusting them, and there were certain characters where, well, there's one at least who gets shrunk. I don't want to give too much away about the books. And so we had to come up with a way of making their voice sound different, but the same. So we sped it up slightly or changed the pitch. So they didn't speak any faster, but the pitch was changed as if, you know, if you speed up a voice, it's so it sounds higher, like they're smaller. And there was just little tricks like that, that we worked on for a little while. And then once we got them down, then, then you said, okay, yeah, let's start recording the book. But during that process you said that this this book that book at that stage it's now three books and it probably was always planned as three books you said this is my legacy what did that actually mean you don't have to um, talk about this if you don't want to but no it's might... fine i made a compromise so many people and i don't mean just a few that kept saying it i mean so many people have said oh you got to write a, a, a story about your life and i'm like no i don't you know and um <laughs> I mean, but so I did a compromise. I wanted to write a book series that was what I call transformational science fiction, kind of science fiction fantasy kind of thing, and and have elements of everything I've I've life hacks and uh, things I've learned in life uh, as part of their lives, you know, that kind of thing, and adapted to fiction, and it's really turned out to be a, a really great growing experience for me on top of it because I have to revisit it all. So, um, but it, that's why I keep saying it's my legacy because it's everything I've basically done in my life, put to fiction um, and the concepts and life hacks. Uh, so that's why I say it's my legacy because 
you know, I want people to have fun and learn at the same time. And I want it to be a book series that you can read over and over again and still get something else out of it. So. So what kind of things in there are experiences that you, that you have or, or are based on real life then? Because this is a pretty out there book. I mean, we're talking multiverse. We're talking time warping backwards and forwards through different time zones. So for you to say to me, oh, no, this is my life, I'm like, wow, she's a Martian. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, I told you I was weirdo, but, yeah, it, you know, some of the characters' uh, events are actual events that I actually lived, but it adapted to fiction, and uh, especially Aya. Yes. Aya has a lot. Um, all of them do, but... Um, Aya is, um, is the main one. That was my compromise. So though everything is adapted to fiction, you pretty much, you know, whatever happens to her, you can definitely it's count on the fact that that happened in my life, at least in some way. So, um, yeah, all of them have something that has been part of my life, but, you know, adapted and as you were writing it, so did you start with Aya at the core? Yes. Because I, but... as, as I read them, for me, and maybe it's just me, I don't, I don't place Aya at the core of this book. That's how it started, though. Okay. Because I, I place Reyes at the, start, at the core of the book. Exactly. And for and, me, and... his transformational journey is what appeals to me about it, but that might just be me. No, that's how I meant it. I wanted okay. to focus off. I, I wanted to focus off, <laughs> off my life, uh, you know, maybe uh, and and have more fun with it. Because if I made it too personal, it wouldn't have been fun. Zreus raised his bow and concentrated hard to make sure his arrow was prepared right. The ex Jankwa had started pushing the debris forward quickly and were only metres away from the wall of debris coming into the room. As he took a breath and aimed, he noticed the walls shimmering slightly. It almost broke his concentration. I hereby, he said as he listened to the line on his bow get tight. Name you. He made sure his aim was spot on where there were still a few flames from the flaming body in the debris. A new species called the Chard, you ticking, life-sucking monsters. I want to I wanna tell a story from, from as much point of view from everyone that can, everyone can relate to, not just me. So this, is, this book isn't about me, and that's why I didn't want to write a book about myself, is because... <sighs> I've lived it already. I don't want to write a book about myself. That's like, I would never finish it. You yeah. know? <laughs> yeah. So, but in the beginning, book one was totally different than what it ended up being. Oh, it yeah. It through over 22 edits. Oh, really? Oh, oh sorry. Yeah. When, you, when, I, when I said, oh, yeah, I meant from where the journey we went from book one to book three. But you're telling me within book one, there was a journey of 23 edits? I, I quit counting at 23 edits. Okay. So it was, it started out totally different. Yet there was a thread of core that was still the same, but it, it started out totally different. Yeah. But, um, yeah. And along the way, how, do you get feedback along the way through the process or do you wait till the end? And how does that all work then? Oh, you mean when I'm writing the book? Yeah. I have, I started out when in book one, I actually had 11 beta readers, but it was kind of useless, honestly, except for a couple. And I don't mean to disregard the beta readers. It's just that if they don't give good constructive feedback, to me, it's worthless. Yeah. I mean, I don't want to hear, oh, that's so nice. Oh, that's so nice. And then suddenly, you know, people hate the book. You know, I need yeah. somebody to be brutally honest and say you know this really stinks <laughs> i don't get this you know kind of thing i want to know that because i'm writing it for the readers not me 
Yeah. You know, so yeah. now I've boiled it all down to two critique uh, critique partners. One main critique. I just learned to talk today. Critique partners. <laughs> So that is the most valuable thing I've ever done with these books is have one hardcore critique partner. And we trade all different kinds of edits, developmental edits, copy edits, final proofreading, everything. We trade that. So yeah. it, and, and she's a, a real stickler. She's actually from the UK. Yeah. Um, she's a real stickler for detail. Is she the one you've mentioned to me that lives not that far from where I live? Yes. Yes. Right. Which is spooky isn't it yeah <laughs> <laughs> yeah but she's been amazing um it was it was fun trading back and forth she would send me her documents i'd send her mine and we'd mark the crap up you know out of it and you know of course it's just opinion you yeah, know, it's just yeah perspective but you know the i don't get this this doesn't fit kind of thing is really valuable yeah otherwise yeah. You know, you can join the rest of the ranks out in the world that just, sh you know, slap books out there and they're really badly written. And, you know, it, I don't want to be that. I want I don't want my legacy to be that. So <clears throat> it's really um, it's really a, a, a con time consuming process, but totally worth it. And had you written before? Only courses, courses and technical tutorials and but not uh, fiction. Nope. Fiction's totally different. Right. So, uh, see, I've never written fiction. And so I don't know where, where you find the, because you need, like, you need to be inside lines. I don't, because I would just like, if I had total freedom to just keep creating characters, I'd have a new character on every page. I mean, <laughs> but you've got to, you've got to boil it down to, a, to, you know, I don't know. How, how do you, do you, do you rein it in? Okay, so this especially is my science problem. fiction where anything can happen. You know what I mean? It's not like <clears throat> right. if you did a period piece, you could say, "Well, I can't." You know, depending on whether cell phones have been invented or even electricity has been invented. In a period piece, you've got a, a clear set of rules for that. But in science fiction, that's open ended, and in all fiction with characters, you can go wherever you want. How did you? How did you pare it all down? That would drive me well, crazy. <laughs> Well, see, that's the thing is, is when I first started this whole thing, I tried to do my, I tried to be a good little author and outline things. Yeah. And that's why I went through 23 edits mm -hmm. plus mm -hmm. because I just, I'm a pan, I, I've, I'm a full fledged general pantser, you know, a discovery writer, they call it. It's a nicer way than pantser. So what I oh, do? Did you say? Is, did you say I, pantser? Yeah. Pantser. What does that By mean? The of your pants. Okay, you that's know. a pantser. Okay, right. Yeah. Yeah. So they they a lot of people got got really offended with it and stuff. So I, a lot of the community is actually changing it to discovery writers. I see. So <laughs> what else? But anyway, <laughs> um, that it wasn't working for me. And so I started, you know, I thought, well, you know what, universe, <laughs> if I'm supposed to do this, I want a hint as to what I'm supposed to do. And I sat down for a meditation and I had this clear image that just, and it was literally, there was a pad and a pencil and it says, everything will work out perfectly if you just write. Right. Yeah. And so that's when I started just writing. Yeah. And so how I rein to answer your question, how I rein that in yeah. is when I'm when I'm writing this draft. If when I say something, if something comes through and I'm just writing my little writing brains going on, I don't stop and think about it right then. But when I go through my second my first, you know, kind of second draft, I call it. <laughs> when I go through my second draft, I that's when I actually kind of plot things out. Now that I've gotten it all out on paper, I think, okay, is this character going to have significance later? 
And I just ask my gut. That's it. I mean, literally, I stand up <laughs> and I'll I'll ask this yes or no question. And my body will tell me if I lean, this is called body sense. If I lean forward, if I feel myself leaning forward, then I, it's a yes. If I in, end up leading, leaving, you know, leaning back, it's it's a no. I mean, oh, it's, it's a, a it's actual proof. physical thing. Yeah. Yeah. It's scientifically proven to be very accurate. And a lot of doctors um, that are more um, nature based um, or nat naturopaths or whatever, they actually use muscle testing and and body sense to dose out medications or herbs and things like that, because your body will tell you. Right. So that's what I essentially do is, is if, if, if this is going to be, you know, this has only happened one time though, if this is going to be something significant, then I will give them a name. Right. If they don't have a name, they're not significant. They're just passing, passing through right. the story. Right. If you'll notice a lot of the characters, they don't have names. They might be there for a little bit, yeah. but they're not going to have a significant thing. Yeah. You know, yeah. so yeah. Um, there's only been one that I've, I've, my gut has said, yeah, this is significant, but I haven't learned the significance yet. Okay. okay. I mean, I, I have a general idea of where the series is going. Yeah. There's probably four more in the book at least. But you think there's uh, four more books? Four more books in the series, yeah. Okay, right, all right. Um, it, yeah, and um, which probably means it may be six, because I thought this was going to be one book, and here we are at three. <laughs> <laughs> and they're not short either. No, no. What? How long was Deliverance? I think Deliverance is the longest one so far. I think was it about actually Nagadara was the longest one. Deliverance was a close he at the close heel, but. Nagadara was the biggest one. In fact, I had to trim Nagadara down so that I could reach, I could get underneath the 550 pages because Amazon had a, a page limit on oh, their books. They? Okay. Yeah. Now, how they know. get the, how they print out and stuff for, um, you know, people like, you know, the, the, that do stories like Lord of the Rings or something that is like freaking thick you know foot thick yeah. I, I don't know they probably have special except you know thing for that but they probably go through ingram spark and then do it on amazon so anyway yeah i had there was a 550 page limit so i had to trim that one down <laughs> i had to take a chapter out wow just so i could get underneath the limit because wow. i refused to make the, the the text uh really small right i see yeah yeah because yeah. i want people of all ages to be able to read it and not stress yeah so i i don't sacrifice the print to get underneath the to get to cram a story and i just won't do it what i like about them uh and i think yours i counted up was it yesterday or the day before of how many audiobooks i've done since i've started doing this and it's i think it's 144 but out of all of them, yours are the ones where the characters tell the story more than any other book. Whereas, so as a narrator, instead of, I find myself with your books, and it's more fun with this way too, instead of explaining what's going on, the characters are having conversations and you get what's going on in the stories. Now there's narration in there too to link it together. But it's mostly told through the dialogue of the characters, or it certainly feels that way. Was that a deliberate, a conscious thing on your part? Yes. Right. Because Why? I want the reader or the listener to be part of the story. Right. I want them to experience these life hacks. I want them to live it with them. Yeah. As if you're in the room. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, well, that works. It definitely works. And with this being the third in the series, this one differs from the first two in that we narrate it together. <laughs> <laughs> that's, 
bless you that's all i can say bless you dear friend <laughs> why did you decide that after two that the third one no i'm gonna be in this one too well kind of it's kind of weird because i before i even mentioned it i was thinking wow you know graham is really good but there's a lot of characters in this this <laughs> there's this a lot series. of characters in it yeah yeah i mean it's not like you're overwhelmed with characters at one time but there's a lot of characters and i want the listener to when they hear your voice i want them to know who is talking you know right. one of the reasons why i was so picky about the voices um so in book three it introduces <laughs> several new characters uh, yeah you know and a lot of them female yeah <laughs> that's really weird so <laughs> i initially thought well who am i going to get i need to get i want this to be i don't want you know graham to be you know so spread thin that all the voices start sounding alike because of the whole immersion thing yeah and uh, especially when the same they, same kind of voices interact with the same kind of voices kind of thing so it would i don't know i could see it kind of melting together not that you couldn't have done it i just thought you know this is going i want this experience to be you know truly as much immersive as, as possible and i actually started scoping out other women first yeah and i'm thinking wait a minute <laughs> Hello, I'm a narrator. I mean, I mean, <laughs> That's I'm right. We should mention as well that you've narrated <laughs> audio books. You've, uh, you've been doing that too. So, you, yeah, and I think you, in the in the WhatsApp conversation we were having at the time, that's exactly the way you put it. You went, "Hello, I'm." <laughs> I'm pretty sure, word for word, that's what came up. And I went, "Oh, well, that makes sense." Yeah. Yeah. So I'm like, okay, well, I'll just do the new female voices, and then that'll take some load off of you. <laughs> because even with the new male voices, yes, you're yes. still stretched. Now, 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 yes, it takes load off because I don't have to find another character. But, but you have to <laughs> as I said, when you do, because I've done them with Danielle Pai from Florida, uh, her last few books she'd, she, I've done with her. And, and we have a great relationship as well. So I'm not talking out of school here. We, we have fun with it as well. When you do it that way, whichever one of you puts it together, and uh, Danielle's and, and I, we shared the last one, but with your one here, I did all the, the production. It's a lot more work than if you... Because instead of like getting to a, to a scene where you, you have one character and if they're having a conversation, you can just literally do the two voices live. It feels like you're, you know, you're Robin Williams in Good Morning Vietnam when you're doing that. <laughs> But you can, and you can get you can get the conversations recorded reasonably quickly, not necessarily in real time, but reasonably quickly, you know. But when you've got other, you, you say a line, and then you've got to find the other line in the in the edit, and then cut that in, and then put that in, and then after they've said, you've then got to respond to that line, and the word might be yeah, and then you've got to get the next one and put that in. It's 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 it's. it's more time consuming to to do it that way but uh i think the result has come out great so yeah, you made I the do. right choice to to do that yeah. i think it really has particularly who's the little boy what's his name i told you when we were doing it that you sounded great in that what's his name aya's friend what's his name i've forgotten his name now oh oh in deliverance got it got it got it got it <laughs> Trevor. Where were you? Where were you just now? <laughs> I, I, we were, I don't know. I'm thinking Trevor. boy, book one, boy. I, I'm no, no, here, no, right? no. In Deliverance, Trevor, when you yes. do Trevor's voice, do you pitch your voice up for that as well? Do you put an effect on that? I actually do it a little higher and then I pitch it up. Oh, I see. You do my both. My voice as a female is, is pretty low. Yeah, yeah, I see. Yeah, yeah. And since he was only eight years old. Yeah. 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 Well, so, so I did then a higher one, and then so, pitched it up. So now you've narrated books on your own. You've narrated this one with me. You've written them as well. What do you prefer, solo narration, narration as a duo, or writing? Because you do it all now. I like the variety. 
Um, okay. I I really, as far as the narration, I really love the duo thing. Okay. <laughs> you know, well, you don't probably because you're processing it. Now, I did offer, to to be fair, I did offer to do it. <laughs> no, I you knew you were right. You know, when you said that, and we'd already got a lot of characters going in this series, at book three, now is the time to re when you introduce some of the newer characters to to just give it a tweak. I think you timed it about right. I don't, I don't know if you waited till after the first two or what, or what the process was, but I think at about book three was about time just to to change it up, you know, like in a, you know, the third series of a long running um, show, the new characters seem to appear just to freshen things up a little bit. And I could have done them and it wouldn't have been as fresh. And I think, I think that the results speak for themselves. The results make it all worth it. Although I might have got a bit crotchety now and again over it, but that's just, I always do that in every, in every book I have a moment where, and then I'm over it. And then we're through that. We're through the thing and we, and then, we, then off we go again. Yeah. But, um, yeah, yeah, it, it, it really works well. Um, and I like the way it's come out and I'm still amazed. I mean, the technology now, we all take it for granted, but you know, you're the other side of an ocean. And then when you listen back, it sounds like you're in the same room. Um, I think we ended up using the same brand of microphone in the end, didn't we? Because we did yeah, tweak that on the way through. Yeah, that was a big, that was a big pain in the butt for both of us. What because, trying to match the match the start the sound? Yeah. Yeah, because I I you know I listened to another couple of audio books with with, with a duo. And um, I just didn't want it to sound like one voice was overpowering the other or that they were in a different room with a different, you know, brightness. I just I didn't want that. If I yeah. couldn't figure I if I couldn't figure that out, then I was just going to say, you know what, Graham, do you just do it? You've done a beautiful job already. But you're like, no, you should try this. No, you should try this. And what so, was I what was um, I asking you to try? You. um well, remember I had that condenser mic. You did. You did. And for right. anyone and who, we're getting, we're getting, now we're getting really, and if, if someone is watching this who is a narrator or a wannabe narrator or something, this is, here's a big trick that goes against what you're told. And it goes against what you're told because there are basically two different kinds of microphones. There are dynamic microphones and there are condenser microphones. And most voiceover people and Audiobook narrators, anyone who works with a microphone and their voice alone, and most radio people in the UK anyway, will also tell you that you need a condenser mic. And I'm here to tell you, you don't. And in fact, you shouldn't. The reason why is because condenser mics are superior in many, many ways over a, a, a dynamic mic. And a condenser mic is so superior. It's a better mic. It's a more expensive mic. It's it's the detail and the sharpness and everything is better, 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 better. But they're more sensitive. And you don't want them too sensitive because they pick up everything. And you don't want everything. You just want your voice. And with a condenser mic... I didn't mic, have a true sound booth. You didn't at the time, no. And And if you've... If, a condenser mic, if you're in a perfectly treated space, like a professional recording studio, and you are not pushing buttons or clicking a mouse or anything along the way, if you're, you've got an engineer the other side of a glass and everything, a condenser microphone is going to be the way to go. But if you are like most people where you're in a radio studio where you're pushing faders and sliders and the door might be opening and salespeople might be coming in and out, or... If you're clicking a mouse to read copy or something, I mean, the amount of times I've listened to radio station where there's an interview going on and you can hear a mouse clicking and it's the presenter clicking the mouse, opening emails and whatever. It's because they're using a condenser mic and it's picking up everything. The, the chair squeaking and everything's going on. So you, if you get a dynamic mic, they're not as sensitive, but you get a very, very good high-end dynamic mic like the... I'm not getting paid to say this, but the Electro Voice 320, the, not 320, the Electro Voice <laughs> RE20, which RE20. is the, the RE20, which is the top. It's probably about the most, the, the best dynamic mic you could get. They're, 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 they almost sound as good as a condenser, but they don't have that sensitivity 
that condensers have. And you were starting with a condenser mic. It was a great mic. It's a beautiful microphone. But your space wasn't perfectly treated, so you kept you kept working on that until you got that treated really, really well. And in the end, I said to you, you know, maybe you should try a dynamic, because I didn't want you to be spending money and whatever. <laughs> and uh, and I'd, with the, I'd started with the Electro Voice 320, which is the cheaper version. And for my voice, it was just a touch bright. And I, I liked it to be a bit more neutral. And so I switched up to this one, which was about another hundred dollars up from the from the 320 to the RE20. And then you I ended I'm I, I said to you, you should get both and try them out. And you you did. And you got I did. both and sent one back. And you ended up the same place. Because some people, the 320 will suit their voice. That's the other thing with microphones. It's got to suit your voice as well, and everybody's voice is different. And uh, if you've got a really, really deep booming voice then the 320 will probably be the way to go because it picks up the brighter end but if your your voice is more kind of in the mid-range then you want something a bit more neutral like the re20 so but we got there in the end didn't we yeah we did and thank you for the patience in that i mean he man you were really patient (laughs) <laughs> and I was like, I had, I think I had to take apart my sound booth like six times. Yeah. Was this before trying... you got the, the dynamic mic? Is this while you were still on the condenser? Were we trying to get rid of a little sound? Because most, yeah, six... most of it is the space. You've got to have a dead space. The, the, right. the, the, the treated of the space, but then to go the extra level, you've got to get rid of the condenser mic if this, and go for dynamic. You have to. Because I have traffic outside. I'm, I live on a main thoroughfare, so I, can, I, I would have to, to, uh, to record at two o'clock in the morning because you literally were doing that, weren't you? Yeah. 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 And I was like, no, uh, this is enough. I'm tired of this. <laughs> And, and it just didn't sound as good, you know, when, when we did our tests, we did, you know, we, it just, mine sounded just like I was blaring or it was, the brightness was so bright that it was like, we weren't in the same room. It, it sounded hokey to me. Yeah. Yeah. And um, of course, then again, I'm a, I'm, I have really sensitive hearing. So I have really, I mean, I can hear nuances that most people would never hear. I probably missed my calling because I probably should have been a sound person. <laughs> De- depend- depending on what version of sound person you were, though, you could have lost your hearing because that happens to sound people. I think there was a guy who wrote a book once about mixing bands at gigs, and the book was called Going Deaf for a Living. <laughs> oh, my So maybe God. you dodged a bullet there. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I don't mean band for bands, but, yeah, I think... Uh, yeah, so it was it was an interesting thing. So then I sent you a sample of both mics. Yeah. Actually all three mics. And I didn't tell you which one. You didn't was tell which. me which was which. And I just said mic C or whichever one it was. I said that one sounds the best. And it turned out to be the RE twenty. <laughs> yeah. I was hoping it was gonna be the three twenty because they're cheaper. And I didn't want to yeah. be responsible for sending you broke, you know, and and making you buy all this kit. Because I don't you know, <laughs> I, I think you should I honestly believe that, you know, if you're setting up in this game to do audio books, you should get in as cheap as possible, which is, or maybe I'm just cheap, which is why I did my first 50 something books from inside my wardrobe <laughs> before I even had a proper sound booth. I did. I did the first 50 or so. I did all of yours in here, though, in professional booth, but uh, I did the first 50 or so. Mine's the, a DIY, so. DIY. Yeah, yours looks good. Then sounds sounds great, and that's all it has to do. Yeah, and and whereabouts in the United States are you again? Right now, I'm in California, but I'm moving in a month um, to Pennsylvania. So wow, right across that's what two thousand miles. Yeah, three thousand miles almost. Three thousand. Yeah. Wow, and why? Uh, I just, it's too, cost of living here is too high for me. There's you know, a lot of people moving out of California at the moment, yeah. aren't there? There's an exodus yeah, it's on. it's just ridiculously high. It's, it's actually higher cost of living now than New York City. And what is, what is it? Is it rents? Is it food? Is it, what's it so expensive? There? Everything. Oh, really? Gas is so much higher than everybody else's, you know, food and, you know, everything. The way wow. they tax everything. And why is that? I don't know. 
I and just, I don't do a whole lot of news. Uh, I just <laughs> rely on friends. My friends know, okay, Ish doesn't watch news. So if there's anything important, they know to tell me. Just say, hey, look, I saw this on the news, you know. <laughs> oh, thanks for giving, keeping me up to date, you know. And when it comes to politics, I have several friends that I say, look, you know, I need your politics people. You know, I need your point of views on such and such. So I know how to vote. I mean, <laughs> like, I don't know. I mean, I, I want the feedback. I want the education, but I don't want to spend my life in, in politics or whatever. You know, I want to be up to date, but not with a crap. So I think that's what makes you such a positive person because the news is all negative. You know, there's that yeah, classic phrase in newsrooms. If it bleeds, it leads. And, and it's, it's like usually bad news. On negativity. Yeah. They want negativity, negativity, threats and fears. Yeah. And, and the thing that, and I've said this before to many people, the thing that people can't understand, because I've worked in news uh, for the BBC, and what the news is, is a collection of events that don't normally happen. If somebody gets up in the morning and goes out to work and comes home and they do that every day, that isn't news. But if they go out to work and get attacked on the way to work, that's news. But that's not normally what happens. It's It was the right. unusual thing that made the news. So the news is a collection of things that don't normally happen. They're very unusual occurrences from storms to, in our case, prime ministers coming and going. And these things Mad don't murder. normally happen. So mm -hmm. kidnapping and all that. But then people sit and watch it every night and they see all these things happening and they go, hey, the world's a terrible place. Look what's happening all the time. It's not happening all the time. That's why it's news. <laughs> and people get and that's what happens. And people think they live in a much in a in a world which is much more unsafe much more unfriendly and the truth is most people are basically good and it's the rat bags that give the world a bad name but they're the ones that end up on the news <laughs> exactly i even yeah. did a, a research one time and statistically um we're we live in the safest time in history than we've ever lived in before yeah even with all this stuff going on yeah there's two common things, isn't there? The truth is that the world is getting better and better and better to live in. There is less child hunger now. There are fewer people killed in car accidents now. There, there are all these things are better. You live, we're li we've never lived as long. You know, all the, the world is getting better and better and better, but people are always saying, it's getting worse and it's never been this bad. <laughs> but overall, that's that, that. those are the two things that are going on simultaneously. But they've always gone on simultaneously like that. Right, this is not they have. Different. It's not new. It's always that's been why... getting better and people have always been saying it's getting worse. Yes. And it's so, it's so funny because there's some, there's some people that have read my book series that said, how can you write these, some of these awful things? <laughs> yeah. So what you're saying is I should write a book series that is always all good and nobody would ever read it. <laughs> yeah, it's true. You need the, <laughs> and that's we why do the news. things to ourselves than these characters do to each other. Yeah, and that's why the news gets big ratings. It's because it is the gory stuff. I mean, yeah. All of the successful publications since the Bible. I mean, have you read the Old Testament? Holy cow! You uh -huh. know, there's horrific <laughs> things in there. People being turned into pillars of salt and, and they're just, you know, Noah's Ark. The whole world, innocent children drowned. You know, I mean, it's just it's horrific. <laughs> That's what people love. We're, for some reason, human beings are drawn to this stuff. We crave it. We go and find it, <laughs> even if it isn't real. <gasps> yeah. yeah. We like shocks. I yeah. Think. So, so fiction since the Bible has always been filled with, the, the, you know, the Bible is probably one of the goriest works of fiction that's ever been written. Yeah. But there you go. Yeah.
There you go. So why are you moving to Pennsylvania then? Of there's 50 states. Why did you pick that one? Because I have a group. I used to live there. Oh right. Yeah, I won't be moving to the same exact town, but I used to live there, and I have friends there. Yeah. And um, it just worked out. I mean, they have there was a a couple that um I met through some of my other friends there that had a the top part of a barn renovated into a a, a really nice you know flat wow. and um and it's by a creek and out out in the country and it's 20 minute drive to the to Allentown yeah and um it was just a perfect opportunity it's just like a synchronicity so how far away is it from the area in Pennsylvania where the Amish are they're kind of all over the place. Oh, are they? So, in different areas. So, um, it's more. Let's see. There's a more concentrate. There's more concentration of them, I think, in the in a little more west. Okay. Because right. uh, from, I mean, even though it's out in the country, I, I don't, I don't, I haven't been there in twenty years, so I'm not really, I can't even really answer that accurately as far as present day, but right. Because I've been uh, to Allentown, and and Allentown struck me as a, as a as a decent, honest. I mean, I was only visiting, but it felt to me like a decent, honest, working class kind of town, you know, where it was just normal people, you know, that didn't play golf. <laughs> if that's a, I don't know. Uh, just you know because uh, i mean we went specifically there because it's the home of mac trucks and we don't have mac trucks in the uk we had them in australia we don't have them in the uk and m-a-c-k is the way i spell my name and we bought a lot of stuff in the shop t-shirts and stuff that said mac and boots and uh, even <laughs> a, a, a bowl for the cat you know um and that's why we went there but th the vibe i got from allentown was it was just you know, it was just a decent, it was just a, a good place to, to live and grow up. And I found anyway, on the road trips we've done through the U.S., that when you get out of the big cities, you find the the people are much nicer in the smaller towns. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. I reckon that will be good. That'll yeah. That be really good. So when does that all happen? I leave here on uh, the end of November. All right, soon. Mm-hmm. Wow. Okay. Yeah. All right. All right. Well, let's get back to the book. <laughs> the book's called Deliverance. It's the third in the series and they are science fiction. Why did you choose to write science fiction when you could have gone for any genre? You went for science fiction. I wanted to go with science fiction because I didn't want hardcore science fiction because people have a concept of what hardcore science fiction is. And that's not the kind of story I wanted to do. So I didn't want to mislead there. Mm -hmm. um, and plus, I wanted to have um, some metaphysical stuff in there. Uh, you know, I just I didn't want to be held in a bag, you know, a, right. a finite bag. So I went, um, you know, science fiction fantasy is how I actually la labeled it. So because I wanted you know, everything in there, even the alchemy of the ba the base alchemy of their quote unquote magic system, quantum. Yes. Is science, you yes. know, uh, so and body science uh, and a lot of the things that uh, are brought up and, and people don't realize it. And I, I wanted to use those on as the basic, you know, and I, I would say programming language of that particular kind of system um and so but i didn't want it to be so serious that people took it literally so that's kind of how i kind of masked it is um being true to science but yet if you're not into it you don't have to yeah you know, i don't think you have to be a science like fiction fan to enjoy the books i think anyone who enjoys uh fantasy books or you know, I've done I've done a series called Goblin Summoner, which is not science fiction, but it's a similar kind of vibe. Um, and it, it, yeah, anyone who's into that kind of fiction would love this. I think. lit RPG. Lit RPG. Yeah, I've done a, a few yeah. series. It has of those, elements yeah. of that in it too, so that's why yeah. it sound probably sound, seems familiar because I've read those series too. Yeah. And yeah, it's uh, 
it that's probably why because there is like a gaming element in there yeah yeah it's part yeah. of the rules so it wasn't a commercial decision because I think science, I think science fiction, fantasy, and romance. Off the top of my head, I could have that wrong, but they're if they're not the biggest selling fiction categories, they're right up there. Um, romance is the biggest. It's the biggest, is it? It's the right. biggest. Yeah, but Everything science fiction's is up there, romance. isn't it? So you huh? don't fancy doing a romance book then? <sighs> Well, I don't mind narrating them or or reading them from time to time, but it's it's not my. I mean, I I, I don't want to be frank. I don't want to. I don't live my life thinking about sex. <laughs> so I'm well, thinking about doing all kinds of fun stuff. And, yes, uh, you know. I've I've um I've narrated many romance books, and in in all of them, I have played the male and the female character. And have ended up making out with myself. (laughs) 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 Yeah. Oh, you look so cute. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. That's Robin Williams in Good Morning Vietnam right there. That is, I mean. (laughs) I should put a webcam on here when I'm recording them. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Yeah. But uh, okay, so which writers inspired you? Kevin Hearn. What does what's Kevin done? I mean, I probably should know. He, he's but... my biggest influence on uh probably cuz he read he wrote the Iron Druid Chronicles series. Right. I'm not familiar with them. What are they science fiction? fantasy mainly okay there, yeah. but there's still elements of science fiction in there because about because it has alchemy in it i mean i think he had i think he has a has both labels on them but i don't know what the main c- category is i, I yeah. didn't pay attention to that he but. might sit in both some some books do sit in both exactly categories. like mine yeah. I, yes. I have when I, he picked two categories you pick i picked science fiction first and then fantasy i think he might do the opposite but um, it it, I mean, the main character is has an alchemy shop, you know, a, a magic shop, you know, kind of thing. And um, but his his was absolutely amazing, and his genius and humor, um, sliding that in, and um, and the his his whole, you couldn't predict anything almost. And it was a really big inspiration for me. I mean, I love a lot of books, but that one is my top inspiration. So when were you reading them? Were you a kid or or an adult? No, it was when I was an adult. Yeah? Okay. Yeah. There's a little um, Douglas Adams in there too, you know. Have you noticed that in your books? I I, haven't read Douglas Adams. Douglas Adams did... Well, it was originally a radio play, but I read it when I was about 17 as a, as a book. But it wasn't written as a radio play. It was written as a book. So it, right. It was originally a radio play, but it wasn't like a radio play script. He'd written the book, and I don't know what order he did them in. But Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy was the first one. And then I'll I read the, the, up, the, the, the two sequels. And, I mean, they're... Their comedy, and your books are not, strictly speaking, comedy, but I found there was, and I found that with um, Daniel Pye's science fiction books as well, that there was a there was elements of Douglas Adams in there, and she recognized it. So yours has been done subconsciously, I think. <laughs> but yeah, you should well, check yeah, him if you're out. having fun and you walk away from a book laughing, to me, that's the best medicine in life, no matter what you're doing. Yeah. So I wanted to add that element in there. Yeah. I mean, it's not strictly meant to be a comedy, but some of no, the but stuff there's humor in there. Yeah. But I mean, you know, especially when it's... with Zreus, is it book one with Zreus and the statue? Yeah. And uh, and what happens with him? How he? I don't want to go too far into this, obviously, but it's pure comedy. <laughs> Yeah. 
Yes, chapter 37. There you Everybody go. talks about chapter 37. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Now that that could be straight out of Douglas Adams. You know what I'm Yeah. Um you should check it out. I think you'll like it. The Hitchhiker's oh, Guide to the Galaxy. Oh, I will now, yeah. There's two sequels. What's the second one called? Uh, the second one's called The Restaurant at the End of the Universe and the third one's called Life the Universe and Everything. And uh they're really, they're really quite good, and they're, they're good. There was a, there was a movie as well. They made of it. They've, they've tried to make TV and movie of it, but it worked best as a radio play, as an adaptation. It works best as a book, but when they've tried to do other stuff with it, radio has been the easiest to do because, you know, you've still got that, you're still having to use your imagination like you do when you read. So it's the pictures are better, you know. Um, yeah. It's a, it, it is good. And how do you feel that the characters have changed from book one all the way through to book three? Because I think Zareus has gone on a hell of a journey. I think he's been, I think he's almost been reborn into a better version of himself. How, yeah. how, do, how do you think the characters have changed through the books? Um, it's really interesting because, um, I'm glad you picked that picked. It's good feedback because I'm glad you picked up on that because that is, is what I intended is obviously he made this slow change. Now he's got a lot of changes to go through too, uh, but you, the, his change is phenomenal. Yes. I mean, I mean, he's almost three, gone from an out and out warrior to an intellectual. He's certainly maybe not an intellectual, but he's a thinker now as well as a doer. Yeah, yeah, with uh, some kind of emotional intelligence. Even yes. though he's like pissed off so easy, you know. <laughs> but, um, but you know, book three marks. Uh, it's kind of an interesting thing because it, it's, as far as series wide, Israel's development and. It, it's almost like um, book three is gets gets to the point where, you know, you see him go through some stuff. Yeah. You know, especially in the beginning and in, in his transformation, he doesn't understand it all and all that kind of stuff. But it, it's almost like um, a part of this, the part of the series where he is going through happy times, you know, kind yeah. of thing. He's he's celebrating his changes, you know, before the big cat, you know. Book three is kind of a crossroads because it's kind of the catalyst of the series, but it's also a um, that starts things off. But it's also, you know, showing milestones. But you also notice too that two other, you know, several other characters are are it's it's being revealed that they're about they're about to have to go through some changes too. So it, it's it's almost like. Yeah. <laughs> They, you know, it, one one is doing better, and the other one is getting uncovered, and they're finding out secrets about them, and you know all this kind of stuff. My, one of my friends said, I, "I feel like I need to put up a whiteboard." You know, like in mystery movies, it's like, how do you figure out who did what? And and she said, "I found myself actually writing down, you know, like." oh my gosh, who did this? Or what does this mean? Or, you know, yeah. but yeah, it's, um, I want each character to ha to go through those things, but you know, whether they take a back seat or a front seat kind of alternates to keep things interesting, I think. Yeah. There's some darkness in there too. I mean, there's in certainly in book two and definitely in this one, you know, you touch on a kind of a, a domestic abuse kind of a storyline but then you nicely which is what i liked is is well there's a father in it and he's bad you know and he's bad to his wife and he's bad to his kid but then you explain what really goes on and then there's this this wonderful moment of this revelation about who this guy really is and it all makes sense then and instead of being the perpetrator he becomes a victim um and i thought that was really smart how that went down because you could have just written him one way the obvious mm -hmm. way as as the perpetrator and as bad news 
But then you gave him value and everything as well, which was really quite lovely. Is that based on something real that you've experienced? Yeah. It, it's, you know, one thing I've learned in life is that no matter how bad someone seems, there's always a chance for change of heart. You know, because I've, I've seen it. Um, now, this, you know, this character, particular character, is kind of a mix of two people. Right. So, you know, um, but ultimately, my view, my per personal view on life is if, I, if I'm laying on my deathbed, I want to ask myself, how well do I, how well did I love? <clears throat> and then that would measure my success. But, you know, I've noticed that <clears throat> when you have that faith in other people, that somewhere there's some good stuff. They're just conditioned because of their situation. Um, so there's always hope. I mean, anything can change. Um, I'm a lot different than I used to be when I was young, too. So <clears throat> we, we change every day, much less over 20 years or whatever, you know. So I just wanted to give that glimmer of hope that, you know, no, you may not want to live with them or you may not want to associate them da with them daily, but you can live, you can love and love them and, and be there for them from a distance, you know, so, and it can change people. I've seen it happen. So I kind of wanted to add that element in uh, right. to, to the book. So what you're saying is that, that people who you think are bad are probably possessed by a dark alien. <laughs> in a way, yeah, kind of. <laughs> Conditioning is just like that. <laughs> Well, it's a terrific book. It's book three in the Sleeping Phoenix series. I think it works as a standalone anyway, but if you can get through the series from the first to the third, I think you'll find there's a journey with the characters. But I think each of the books is, is a standalone book anyway. Um, I loved it. Thanks for choosing me as the co-narrator on this one. The main uh, narrator. <laughs> well, you, but you, you do lots of the characters too and a lot of the heavy lifting in some of the some of the crucial scenes there. Um, and it was a joy to work with you on, on this. What is next for Ishkia Page? Book four. Book I've four, already so, started it. Um, yeah. Of course, this move is going to delay everything. Of course. But, you know, I'll keep narrating and all that kind of stuff. But, um, yeah, book four is the next one. I had planned to do NaNoWriMo, which is nas National... Writers Novel Week or month right. or whatever of the year, whatever that thing is. But anyway, um, but I'll be right in the middle of a move. So right, yeah, yeah, yeah. So well, best of luck with the move, and if you can get your hands on Deliverance, do it. I mean, obviously, I prefer the audio book, but the the print book is just as good. I know, I've read it, and. <laughs> 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 um, uh, if you'd like to, I've got all the links for you in the description. Um, I'm, I've got an Amazon associate account. So yeah, if you click and you buy it through there, I get a piece of the action. I mean, it's up to you what you do, but, um, all the links will be in the description for all of Ishkia Page's work. And uh, Ishkia Page, it's always a pleasure to talk to you, even though at least once a week we find each other on WhatsApp. But uh, <laughs> thanks for coming on. Cheers. Hey, it was fun. Thank you. It was an honor. <laughs>